Alright, I am back with another video, and today I'm doing another little bit of a bonus video for you guys this week. I've been on a bit of a roll with getting these bonus videos out for you guys, so I thought I might as well keep it up this week, as I didn't really want this to be its own dedicated main video, as it is basically just a fusion of a couple of builds that I've already done this past week, but when I kind of saw the synergy between the kind of two strategies that I used in both of these videos, I thought, I need to make this its own thing, but it's not going to be a full build video in my usual sense. This is a bit similar to when I did my Elemental Nova Minthara build a little while back, in which I'm going to basically just kind of give you a general idea of what the build's about, go over the general leveling scheme uh, just quickly, and then get into the equipment and kind of show you how the strategy works. So, earlier this week, I uploaded a video uh, that was my All Paladin Party, and in that video, I included a build that, in my opinion, I was actually, I felt was pretty unique, basically being able to use Searing Smite in combination with the Pyro Quickness Hat to be able to use the Charger Feet multiple times per turn, being able to zip all around the battlefield doing massive damage, getting fire and radiant damage. Then, on Friday, which would have been, as of recording this, uh, <laughs> a couple of days ago, uh, or as, as, as this video goes up, I should say, uh, I made a video for the Chosen of Tia as part of the Deity Build series. And that video showcased the Line Breaker boots and exactly how broken they can be. So I, then I got thinking, why don't I take my kind of um, my Paladin build from that from the party video, take off the single class restrictions allowing me to multi-class, and then combining it with some of the things I learned from the tier build, and that's what I've got for you today. An extremely powerful, fun build with great theming and a unique playstyle. Let's get into it. So, this is what the build generally looks like when it's all complete. I've not included the earlier game variants uh, for the equipment here, however, links to the wiki pages for what I would recommend are in the description as always. Just for the sake of keeping this video slightly shorter, I'm not going to go over all of them here. So, the main things that we want from this build are the Pyro Quickness Hat and the charge of feet. The way these two are going to work together is the fact that because whenever we deal damage with a fire spell, which in our case is going to be Searing Smite, we're going to be able to get an additional bonus action. Since Charger, the uh, feet, the weapon attack from the feet, takes both our action and our bonus action to use, it is a bit resource intensive. However, Taking some Thief Rogue levels, basically just dropping four levels of Paladin for the four levels of Rogue, to get three bonus actions per turn, we all of a sudden can then do a Searing Smite, then a Charger Attack uh, after that. But then, what are we going to be using that third bonus action for? Well, that's going to be for our Cunning Action Dash. The Cunning Action Dash is not only going to give us more movement speed, which is all in theme for this flaming uh, speed, so thing that we're trying to do here, but it's also going to allow us to trigger the effect of the Line Breaker Boots, which, whenever we dash, we gain Wrath for, t for two turns. Is what those boots say. In actuality, this once per turn restriction does not exist, and it's not two turns of Wrath, it's three so with own um, and there's so basically if you wanted to at the very start of combat you could do two cunning action dashes to immediately get wrath up to six because the maximum it can stack up to a seven then get off or maybe do a searing smite first then do the couple of dashes so you get full three bonus actions getting your power up extremely high because wrath adds a plus one bonus to the damage with melee weapons for every turn of the condition remaining so with a seven in a seven stacks of wrath that's a plus seven to every weapon attack and plus adding on the uh, charger feet and all that uh, which also adds on extra damage it adds an extra five piercing damage as well as the extra damage from the smites whether that would be divine or radiant you've got some serious power here and because we're using a finesse weapon the peel of sun blade which i have buffed with fire damage so now it has fire and radiant and an additional plus two piercing from the dueling fighting style which paladin gives us in addition to being able to use sneak attack because we can get sneak attack on our attacks as well adding an extra 2d6 slashing damage because we can always have advantage thanks to vow of enmity from vengeance paladin 
what you've essentially got here is a massive combination that creates high damage strikes and a ton of maneuverability around the battlefield with a really cool and fun playstyle, allowing you to zip all over, deal massive amounts of fire and radiant damage, and even because you're using the charge of weapon attack, you don't provoke opportunity attacks, so nothing can catch you. Now, this build does have some caveats. Of course, uh, my initial layout for this build was actually to go two Paladin, six Swords Bard, four Rogue. A pretty standard level spread that I've used in a couple of builds, but unfortunately, because we really need three feats in order to make this build work, we really want to get that 18 in Charisma and that 18 in Dexterity, uh, I decided to go for eight Paladin, level four Rogue. Now, that does mean that we're going to be losing out on a few spell slots, but as you can see, I've managed to kind of mitigate that a little bit. Normally, you'd only have four level one spell slots and three level two spell slots, but thanks to the Shield of Devotion, which we want anyway, it's going to give us more AC, it also gives us a level one spell slot, as well as the Spell Savant Amulet giving us an additional level two spell slot. Now, of course, we're not hitting level three spell slots, which is a bit of a shame, and if you wanted to do the mir some Mirror of Loss shenanigans, you could go for that two Paladin... Um, six bard swords or valley just make sure you get that extra attack and then four rogue and you can technically come out of this with um more spell slots you'd get three level three spell slots and a level four spell slot which would be optimal but i don't like to do mirror of lost shenanigans in my builds but that would be the optimal route you could take but if you want something a bit similar that works with less prep then this is what you you kind of want um i've also managed to throw in some extra mechanics for this build that i wouldn't normally do uh that really do elevate this build. First up, we've got the Thermo Arcanic Gloves here. Whenever we deal fire damage, we gain two turns of heat. Now, I've gone on record to say that I don't like the heat mechanic. I think it's a bit of a paltry upgrade for a lot of downside, being that you take damage every turn. But with this build, thanks to the fact that we're going to be using Searing Smite every turn, and the fact that the Peel of Sun Blade is always going to be able to do fire damage, even if we don't use Searing Smite, we're going to be building up pretty much maximum heat every other turn pretty much meaning that we can use heat convergence to add an extra seven fire damage onto our searing smite every so often which is even more damage stacked on top of everything else and because of the way because of the fact that we're a tiefling and we're using the dark fire short bow so even if you don't want to play a tiefling this will still work we gain fire resistance cutting the damage both from the pyro quickness hats burn and the thermo arcanic gloves heat down to half and then combining that with a piece of armor, either the adamantine splint armor or what I have here, the armor of persistence, to reduce that damage by two, well, we don't take any damage from burn or heat. Not to mention that this armor also gives us resistance and blade ward, which is very, very nice to have. Meaning that we can get all of these benefits with zero downside. The only issue that this build is really, really going to have is it is very spell slot heavy. So if you feel like you want to save the majority of your spell slots for a bigger fight, but still kind of want to be able to use this strategy, you can instead of going for the Searing Smite style, go for the Haste style, in which you haste yourself instead. Haste would basically remove the ability to use Searing Smite, unfortunately, making it so that you might have to rely on Divine Smite or regular weapon attacks instead. But by using Haste in combination with having two bonus actions already, you can still use the Charger Feet multiple times per turn, being able to zip all over the battlefield and still get a lot of extra damage that way. Uh, and... Yeah, so that is kind of an alternative alternative mode. You kind of want the Dark Fire Shortbow on this build, especially if you're not playing a T-Footing to get that fire resistance. But then, otherwise, you still have Haste as an option, which fits into the whole Speedster vibe. And then finally, we've got the Killer Sweetheart, which is a standard on all, all of my Paladin builds. Uh, this is going to allow you to basically get a critical hit whenever you want after killing an enemy once per long rest. You guys know how this works already. And finally, the Ring of Free Action to, to stop you from being paralyzed or restrained. Basically, that just means that no matter what we do, nothing is going to be able to stop us moving around and by, by extension, stop us from being able to use the Charge of Feet. Basically, all of these together come come together to make a really fun and unique playstyle. Now, if you really wanted to take it up another notch, and you don't care about who you use this build on, grab Minthara, because you would be able to use her soul branding technique to give you even more movement speed and extra fire damage on your attacks. But my last kind of video in this style was already a Minthara build using soul branding, so I decided to leave that here, as it doesn't it, as it doesn't really add that much to the build overall. Except it would just kind of give you another option to kind of get that extra damage, if you so desire. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else, to, much else to say as far as that's concerned. The only thing is you are going to want to buff the Peel of Sun Blade with the Drake Throat Glaive, with that extra 1d4 of fire to make it a plus 2 weapon, with 1d4 of fire and radiant to give you a ton of extra damage. So, with that in mind, let's see how this fusion of builds does. I've got my combat encounter right over here ready to go. So, I'll start this off as I would with... Well, I'll just start this off with a Searing Smite. We'll do level 1 to start, so we can you can kind of see how the combos begin and how they start. Let me just make sure I'm actually recording. Yes, I am. Perfect. So, we're going to smack this dude. Get off some fire and radiant damage, giving us heat and for Pyro Quickness Hats bonus action. We're going to attack. And we are going to get attacked first. That's fine. We have high AC, so we don't really care. This person's going to try and snare us. Maybe not. There they go. Yep, and it doesn't work. Even if they did uh, land for blow, it wouldn't restra have restrained us because of our other feature. So, as you can see here, we have the extra bonus action. We have three. We have the ability to go for an extra attack, and as you can see, we can use the charger action. So I'm going to use Vow of Enmity here, using one of our bonus actions to gain advantage on all of our attack rolls, enabling permanent sneak attack. I'm now going to use a cunning action dash to start building up those turns of wrath, which you can see here. So now we have a plus three to our damage already. And then if I, I'm going to save my spell slots for now. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go for charger and I'm going to attack the person who just shot me. There you go. Zipped across the battlefield and did, if we check the damage log, 22 piercing, two fire, three radiant, and then the sneak attack came out giving us an extra six damage, which is a bit of on, the, which is a bit on the low side. But as you can see, we did a sizable chunk. And now we also have the ability to go for another attack, because we haven't actually used our action yet, which I don't think is how that's supposed to work, but hey ho. But as you can see here, we've managed to build up five turns of heat as well. Uh, as well as we have the burning, but as you can see, it's not actually doing any damage to us. Uh, we also have things like Aura of Protection as well, which is quite nice, but as you can see, we can go for an extra attack here, so I'm just going to go for a quick swing at the blade, and you can see the damage count here. 1d8 plus 11 damage without the extra 1d2d4 d on top, so we'll just do another quick attack here. There you go. It does another decent chunk of damage, and then we'll just attack again. Boom. Now we have Executioner, so we have a free critical to use whenever we like, and because all of those did fire damage, we now have maximum heat, so we can use heat conversion on the next turn. We're going to get attacked here, but they're going to miss. Now they didn't miss that time, but I'm going to get shield blow, and they saved it. Boom. Right. We're gonna get. Right, we got hit and we got knocked prone, but that is fine. Because we're not concentrating on haste today. So, I'm gonna go for another Searing Smite here. As you can see, this is gonna do a sizable chunk of damage. In fact, I'm actually gonna Cunning Action Dash first. There we go. Now we have five turns of Wrath, which means we're gonna be getting a plus five to our damage. So, with that, you can see we're doing upwards of 41 damage with our Searing Smite. Wa bam. Oh, we could uh, get a guaranteed crit here, but I'm not going to. There you go, that did 21 piercing, 3 fire, 4 radiant, an extra 8 fire damage, and also uh, we there's also the 5 piercing damage from the sneak attack. Uh, and as you can see, we were supposed to take fire damage here, but because, again, resistance and the magical plate brings it down to zero, which is lovely. And now we're going to do a charger attack into this character as well. We're not going to go for... Oh, yeah, okay, we managed to hit, so that's fine. And they're dead, pretty quick. So now we actually get to go ham on the Steel Watcher. He's going to attack us again. That's fine. I'm going to go for a Hellish Rebuke on him. Now, I will remind you that Steel Watchers are resistant to fire damage, so the numbers are going to look a little bit lower here, but you'll see be able to see the full amount of damage that was supposed to be dealt in the log. So, we have six turns of heat here, so I'm actually going to quickly activate Cunning Dash to get maximum turns of Wrath. We now have a plus 7 to our damage, meaning that a basic attack now has plus 15 in addition to the D8, plus the 2D4. Now we're going to go for Heat Convergence, which is going to affect our Searing Smite, giving it a bunch of extra damage. We're going to go for a level 2 spell slot, and... Oh, why not? Let's get the guaranteed crit. As you can see, with the critical hit, we got 11 piercing, 5 fire, 3, three radiant, 7 fire, then Heat Convergence kind of added that extra damage as well. Then we've got 35 Radiant, 7 Piercing, and all that good stuff. And we also have an extra attack now as well, which, unfortunately, because of the way we kind of did this turn, we can't use the Charger Feet, but I could go for a Divine Smite here, but I'll just go for a regular weapon attack. 
which did a decent chunk of damage. I started building up our heat again immediately. We get knocked flat on our ass, but that is okay. So, now we're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to go for a... We actually don't need to really go for another cunning action dash here, so I'm not going to. We're going to Searing Smite right off the bat. We're going to charge a weapon attack. And again, remember, I'm only attacking one target here. You could be charging after anybody in your general vicinity if you wanted to. And then since we have that extra turn, we can just cunning action dash now, actually, since we have the free... Uh, Free action, uh, free bonus action. We got crit there, but that's fine. We're getting a hit a lot more than I did in my testing, I will admit. But now we can use Heat Convergence on our next Searing Smite. And there you go. We're still doing absolutely massive chunks of damage. Hit for that. There you go. The Watcher's not quite in destruction range yet, but that's okay. We can hit him with a Flourish. Did five, <laughs> and then yeah. Not exactly sure what he was aiming at there, but I was smacking with my shield just to tell him no, even though it doesn't do anything. All right, and then finally, this should do the job. And then we hit him with the charger, and there you go. And then we can dash at the end, turning our wrath back up giving us a ton of movement speed. So this build, so this build, obviously, quite powerful. Pretty much single-handedly took care of a Steel Watcher and a couple of extra guards. But this build is really going to shine in encounters with lots of minions. So things like the final battle, uh, or the big battles before the final battle, this build will really shine as it zips all around the battlefield. Any bat battle with a lot of minions, so the one in the, um, in the Shah Church, that I'm forgetting the exact name of, uh, any of the ballist kind of fights, stuff like that. This build will really, really show its stuff. Um, its biggest weakness is the fact that it's long rest dependent. But you can get around that, like I said. You don't have to go all in on this strategy every single fight. You have other options available to you, like just playing a more standard paladin, going for hasting, going for charge a weapon attack, because even without all the extra geth, the charge a weapon attack actually does a lot of extra damage, even still with all this extra stuff we set up. Now, if you, like I said in the tier build, if you really wanted to optimize uh, the damage you can get out of this, all of this would work with a Great Weapon Master build. So if you wanted to go for a strength-based thing with the Potion of Everlasting Vigor to help make up the stats, maybe go for like a 17 starting strength, uh, Ethel Spoon, Potion of Everlasting Vigor, then get Great Weapon Master and Charger. Uh, maybe playing a fighter, but then, but then you wouldn't be able to get Searing Smite. But then you, so you'd kind of have to figure out the leveling, but once you figured it out, Oh boy, that's a lot of damage, and it's again a really fun playstyle, being able to zip all over the m all over the map, dealing fire and radiant damage, smiting evil, all that good stuff. I mean, I really, really uh, enjoy this playstyle. Again, it's one of those builds that like is it's definitely not what you would th expect. It's not what you would think of, but when you actually try it out in practice, it is super, super fun. So yeah, like I said, if you want more of a more detailed kind of uh, explanation of the equipment, well, not explanation, but you'll see like the wiki pages for the equipment down below. If you want some early game options and some like more detailed information about the equipment used in this video, that can all be found down below. But yeah, that is going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.